Our final speaker today, and I hope you will agree with me, I've had a great day. Have you had a great day? Yeah. It really has been super. Thoroughly enjoyed it. But our final speaker today is Richard Chantler. Now, you will have seen Richard earlier. He had the £25,000 cash at the conference, and I'm sure everybody has heard that story. Richard was a fisherman. He joined in 2006 for £50 a week. We often say your first check's the most powerful. Yes, there's people who want to see your two and three thousand pound check, but a 200 pound check, 300 pound check, just as powerful, folks. So Richard joined for 50 pounds a week, but his best turnover now has been 98,000 pounds. That's in a four week period. And his best check is 5,800 pounds. Now, most of us could live on that just for a wee while until it went up. The special achievements, well, he's been on seven clean easy trips and they are wonderful trips, as, as people have said. He had three cars from Clean Easy, which he then um, liquidated, <laughs> put them into cash. And of course, that suitcase with £25,000 in it. So without any further ado, please give a huge welcome to Richard Chantler. I'm just going to wait for the music to stop. Good. Um, thanks ever so much, Lynn, for inviting me up today, um, obviously for the weekend, to talk to you guys. Um, uh, most of you I haven't met, so no normally when I do talk, I've at least met a few people. So it's really exciting for me to come up to Scotland, and the weather's nice now. Well, it hasn't been for the rest of the days, it's always rained. And it feels like a bit of a holiday for me, because... Yesterday, I got on a plane. And you know you get the airport feeling, don't you? You get on the plane, and like it took off, it flew along for five minutes and landed. And I came out, and it was raining. Um, so when I get off the plane for the holiday, you just expect the warmth, don't you? So today, I'm going to share with you, obviously, my story, how it's worked for myself and Claire. And um, I've called it, How Lucky Am I? Because hands up who would like to have 25,000 pounds. Clean, easy. That's, that's, that's nice, isn't it? That's lucky, isn't it? I feel lucky because they gave me £25,000 at that stage. But was it luck? Was it? Well, actually, I am quite lucky, as it goes. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you why I'm lucky. Because here, here's my true identity. And I, everything I touch sort of has a magic happen. And the reason for it is I'm Richard the Lucky Leprechaun. That's me. There I am. There. You see, I always believe there's a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. Everyone heard that, that saying? And that's true. You see, and my rainbow, when we joined, was clean easy. That was my vehicle for my pot of gold. And that's what we used it for. And clean easy, we joined for the extra 50 pounds a week. So let's run you through our little story very quickly. So I call it a start of a journey. Because everyone, when they join the business, is on a journey to whatever destination they want it to. Because Clean Easy can take you to whatever level you want it to. And as you progress in the business, every step you take, the further you can see. And then you progress forwards again. So, opportunity knocks on everyone's door when they're looking for it. Sometimes, do you know you approach people and they don't join you? And then a couple of years later, have you had it, ever had it and they join you? The timing wasn't right? But the opportunity wasn't right from at that time, but it always knocks on your door when you're looking for it. And the great thing about Clean Easy is, it's a, a, the journey, it starts with a single step, doesn't it? You step, step by step, 10%, 13%, 15%, 18%, 21%, gold distributor. So every journey starts with a single step. And the great thing about Clean Easy is, we all start the same. So wherever someone's got to whatever level, Gold, I, would, I can't wait to get to Gold Premier, honestly, and go fishing with John in uh, Dubai as well. So, I call it a journey of hope, because that's what it offered us when we first joined. 
So, obviously, I was a fisherman, and what happened was I came home from fishing one day, and Claire said to me, right, I've got someone coming home tonight to talk to us about earning 50 quid a week delivering catalogues. I went, okay, no problem. That's great. We had two really long, young children at the time. And at that stage, it was my job to look after the kids while Claire spoke to Judy, our sponsor. So I took them upstairs, put on our favourite film, and my favourite film is Shrek. Everyone got a favourite film? Mine's Shrek. And the reason it's my favourite film is because if you paint my best friend green, he looks like Shrek. <laughs> the thing is, I've married him off to one of my team members now, and I can't call her Fiona. That would be death to Richard at that stage. So sure enough, we, I took them upstairs, watched um, Shrek, came back down, Claire, Judy had come to see Claire, and put on a DVD, and it all come up about Clean Easy, and it was showing everything, all the money and all that type of thing. And she said to me, what do you think? I went, sweetheart, if you want to do it, go and do it. She went, so she joined. She was like, it wasn't for me, because I was fishing. She wanted her 50 pounds a week. It was something she could do around the kids, and it was flexible, because they were young. So actually, we were a mum. She was a mum. She worked part-time in a little restaurant as well, and I was a fisherman. And Claire joined. So she joins the business. And then it comes to the day of delivering the catalogues. And that day, I hadn't gone to work. There was a reason for that. It was blowing a gale, horrible, wet and windy. And she said to me, Richard, I've come to a decision. I went, what's that, sweetheart? She went, you're doing the catalogues, I'm doing the paperwork. <laughs> so off I trundled out in the wet wind and rain with my little catalogues. And sure enough, and in that first month, I put out the catalogues and we earned 250 quid. That was our first ever income check from Clean Easy. And then Claire decided to quit. She goes, I don't want anything to do with it. You're going to do it all. And I was like, oh, God, that's just not good. Anyway, I had a few like, little trials and tribulations in the air. But something happened to me. In my first month, I got invited to a meeting. And at that stage, it was a little meeting talking about the catalogs and explaining how it all worked. There was about eight to ten people in the room. And Judy was um, talking through the catalogs. And right at the end, she was drawing these circles about building a team. And she asked one question, and the question she asked was, is there anyone in the room who'd like to build a team? So I looked around the room, and no one had put up their hand. And I thought, oh, because I just thought it'd be a bit of extra money. I was working full time, doing the catalogues as well, and I thought, if I can get some people involved, that'll increase my income. So I looked around the room, no one put up their hand, and I thought, oh, no one else is going to do it. So I went, yeah, I'll give it a go. So sure enough, um, I started to sort of sponsor in the business at that stage. She came around, taught me what to do, and off we went and started to sponsor. And so in my second and third month, I joined two or three people in my second or third month, and it was going really great. You know, and I was really enjoying it, to be honest with you. I was still fishing, I was still doing the catalogues, I was out sponsoring, and it was great fun. And then our first couple of bombshells, we had a load of bombshells in my first year. And the first one, we joined in the May, and in the June, the first bombshell came, and Claire's mum is a property owner. She owns lots of property all the way around Brighton, and she owned the property we live in. She knocked on our door one day. She said, sit down, I've got something to tell you. Um, you've got two weeks to move, I've sold the house. So you've got to imagine, and I've got this really, and she, she's my most favourite mother-in-law at this stage, isn't she? <laughs> Daggers. Um, so, you know, I've got a young family, I've got to move, and obviously all my work and everything else. So what I did, um, I picked up the phone, I, I said, hi, mum. And when a guy phones his mum, they always know they want something, don't they? <laughs> always. Richard, what's up? So I explained to her the situation. She went, yeah, no problem. She was quite happy to have me and the family. So we moved to my mum's house at that stage. And so 30 miles down the coast from where I was, we moved, and I continued again, kept building. And by the sort of October, November time, I was at about 18, 21%. October, I hit 21%. But then my second bombshell hit me. My mum said to me, Richard, sit down. I've got something to tell you. I've got terminal cancer. And I was like, God, you know, that's just not great. So I picked up the phone again because the problem with that was, and we were staying at a house, you see, my dad had had Parkinson's disease for 35 years. So she was his primary carer. So what happened was my mum had to be put in a McMillan's nursing home. My dad required full-time care, so we had to put him in a nursing home. And then, but to pay for all that, because the government wouldn't help us, we had to rent their property to pay for all the nursing care, do you see? So I had to move again. So I moved three times in like three months. So I picked up the phone, and you know, if you paint him green, he looks like Shrek. He was my best friend. We lived together for ages. So I then moved in with him as well. And then at that stage, 
um, I sort of made a decision that I was going to spend that time with my mum. So I put Clean Easy on hold. Clean Easy on hold. Had a team of about eight to ten people, and so I joined in the May. And by the next April, she had passed away. And then I moved one more time. I'm te don't move like I did. In, uh, honestly, I'm never moving again. I've bought a nice house now, and I'm staying there. That's it. Um, so we moved again, and we started again, obviously. So what? this is our little journey as we started. I got lumbered with the catalogs. She quit. The first month, we only joined 50 quid a week. So when people join for 50 quid a week, they could end up like myself. Moved four times in my first year. And then my mum passed away as well in that first year. And then we moved for the last time. But that one meeting, that one meeting where she asked that one question, is anyone, does anyone want to build a team? That's changed my life forever. Forever. And so I'm going to take you on the journey that we've been through so you can see exactly what I've done and how I've done it. And I'm quite a straightforward talking person. It's very ABC to me. And Clean Easy is easy, and it is ABC. So all along the way, I'm going to give you little lucky messages from my little leprechaun here. And these are ones you want to write down, things that I think are relevant in your business and that people should put into practice on a daily basis. Or the first thing I'd suggest to you is you never miss a meeting. They will earn you a residual income forever. So not only do you not miss a meeting, but I would also encourage you to take all your people to meetings as well. And let me tell you an example of that. I was on holiday one time with my friends, and we joined um, his wife to the business. She was doing £100 a week sort of retail, um, earning from the retail. She was earning about £100 a week from doing the catalogues. Anyway, we went on holiday to Spain, and I'm sat at the poolside, and I'm reading a book called Seven Strategies to Wealth and Happiness, written by Jim Rohn. So I'm reading the book, and her husband, he owned his own business. He had a print and stationery business, and he was reading this Aikido book, like really big and thick and really boring with pictures, really small writing. Anyway, so I finished my book, and he wasn't really involved in Clean Easy at this time. He had nothing to do with it. It's just his wife doing it. And uh, I said to him, here, read this book. I think it'll do you some good in your business. He went, okay. So he, he took the book and read it. So after he read the book, he said to me, what is this Clean Easy thing all about? I said, oh, come to the bar with me. So we went to the bar, because you've got to chat over a beer, haven't you, when you're on holiday? Yeah, that's the right thing to do. Anyway, so there I am with the beer, and I said to the barman, can you give me a napkin? So he gave me this napkin, and I, I went, like, this is you. You've got to build a team of X amount of people here. Then you find five other people that are going to do that, and then they find five. He was like, God, can you tell me more about it? I went, no. And he went, why not? I went, I'm on holiday. I don't want to keep going on about it. I just want to get some sun and beer. That's it. Anyway, so I said to him, Ivan, I tell you what I do is I'll take you to one meeting. Come with me to one meeting. If you don't want to do it, that's great. If you do, fantastic. And I took him to a big event, and Rob Foster was speaking, and he joined. But after that, you see, now he joined, and he built a business, and he's £30,000 worth of turnover in my business. What did I do? I took him to one meeting. So there's, there, there's, these are big clues for you, you know? And I'll tell you why you take them to meetings a little bit later on. Okay, so the opportunity of hope. Because I believe we live in a hopeless society at the moment. In the job world, it is hopeless. People being made redundant on a daily basis. Thousands of people scraping the breadline. But we have an opportunity where we can give hope back to all the people. Wouldn't you agree? We have that opportunity. We have that power to change people's lives. So I call it an opportunity of hope. I, you see, I could see it. And also, at that time, I actually visualized the future because I was looking. And when I watched that DVD, I watched it a few times during the month I was doing the catalogs, and I was thinking, what if? What if it could be me? What if? How many people have thought, what if it could be me too? What if? The opportunity was exciting. To me, it was because I used to go and put out catalogs. Then I used to see some people. They'd join my team, and they used to do something as well. And it was just dead exciting. And it's still exciting now, isn't it? Who doesn't get excited when they go and see a few people? Then they join your business. And then it fuels your excitement a little bit more. It was open to everyone. That was really good for me because it didn't matter who I was, um, what race, creed, background. It didn't matter. It was just open to everyone. So the recruiting was really great. 
I could copy. That was another important thing for me, that there was a system in place that I could copy from. Someone was prepared to give me full training. Again, I attended every meeting. Why? Because I hadn't got a clue what I was doing, really. That's why I just wanted to learn. And then I had someone to support me at the end of the phone. My sponsor will tell you now, I used to phone him every day. Not him phone me, I used to phone him. Oh God, what do I do here? What do I do there? But it was great to have that one-to-one -one support for me. It was amazing then when I first joined. But, 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 but. It's bigger than ever now, I think, to be honest with you. The catalogues are just amazing. Bringing in amazing results. The masses are waiting for us. It's a recruiting gold mine, to be honest with you. And the opportunity is a lot slicker and more refined, isn't it? You know, get them started. Ordering, everything is just a lot slicker and more refined. It's easier to get started because of the three pay payment system. 45 pounds, 45 pounds. So it makes it affordable for everyone to join at that stage. Wouldn't you agree? They have a credits facility, 750 quid. So that's good trading in your early days in the business. Free catalogues. They give us extra catalogues when they run out. Get 600 pounds worth orders, give you another 250 free. Double you up. It's a flipping gold mine. But you see, if you're not in that mindset thinking it's a flipping gold mine, you're not mining it like a gold mine. You're not working it hard enough because that's exactly what it is at the moment. So here's my lucky message for you now. Leaders are dealers in hope. That's true. I deal in the opportunity on a daily basis prospecting all the time. I also deal in hope with my team, as in the way I'm, uh, I visualize with them, for them, setting goals, showing them what future they have too within the company. So not only do I deal in prospecting, showing the opportunity, but I love visualizing with my people what they can achieve in the future. But we're dealers in hope. So the system that you have is where the fortune is, to be honest. Every one of us has a system and tracks to run on. But the, that's where the fortune really is. Because it's a competent standard for growth, I believe. Competent standard. And what I mean with that, it's going to tell you how many catalogs to put out, how much retail to do, it will also tell you how many people to bring into your business on a weekly basis to achieve success. Guaranteed. Guaranteed success. So ours is sponsor one person a week. Put out your catalogs, sponsor one person a week. Then, obviously, you've got to coach your people. And to be honest with you, as long as you care about them, you will coach them. Ring them on a regular basis. Look after them. Promote events for development. You see, although you may be developing, it's is your team developing. Because as your team develop, then the business develops. So, and you've got to be heavily into personal development. Read the books. Understand how the business works and operates. And this is the key. You have to work your business day in, day out. Day in, day out. Day in, day out. Day in, day out. Not some days in, some days out. One week doing it, two weeks off. It doesn't work. That's not consistent. And here's my lucky message for you. We develop people who then go on to develop the network. That's our job. My job is to bring, bring them in, bring them on. Bring them in, bring them on. I'm there to develop my people. And as they develop, they develop the network beneath us. So we have hope. So we have the opportunity, and then you've got to add this, action. Write this down on your pad. Action is the glue to all success. Because without it, you're never going to get anywhere. Firstly, you have to have the regular retail plan. Secondly, this is what we did in the early days. We put out the catalogs. And then we built a frontline team of 18 to 20 people. That's what I did. 
quite simple. I had a PSG of 18 to 20 people. The reason for that was because I wanted to earn £2,000 a month. And it was the way to earn £2,000 a month was to have 18 to 20 active people in my frontline business. I then became a lead, lead generation master. Because, you see, the system states, do X amount of retail, and then join X amount of people a week. But I realized at this stage that joining the people was reliant on the amount of leads you've got. Now, just pretend there's two of us in the business. There's me here and my partner here. This person generates 100 leads a week, but this person only generates 20. Who will join the most people to the business? This person. But also, it, it just pretend he's new, brand new. But this person's joining 100, this person's joining 20. If this person's joining 100, we'd agree you'd talk to a lot of people. Wouldn't you agree? Talk to more people. Who's going to become skilled at the business quicker? Hey, you see? So I became good at generating leads. Now, if you've got a system that says you need 50 leads a week, do you think 20 is really going to crack the mustard? No, no. You need 50. Our system tells us we need X, and I became great at getting X amount of leads a week. And I don't do anything special. I advertise. I talk to my warm market. I put out flyers. I put out shop ads. I'll give out business cards. Online I do. Facebook I do. But I do them all, the whole lot of them, not just one single entity. So I get a good mixture of them all. But we joined one person a week. We then coached our team, obviously. We then attended meetings. Then the magic happened. So this is in the early days, because once my mum had passed away and we moved this time, I then started to concentrate on building our frontline PSG. So I restarted, I started in the May, my mum passed away in the April, I rejoined in the June. By November of that year I was gold, and literally, um, a year to the June I started on, I went senior as well. So I'd help one person go gold. It then duplicated, and this was it. But I also had someone in there growing as well. So I'd help someone go on gold by the end of that year, and then someone grow. But here's my little message again. Hope, the opportunity, plus action, equals creation. You will create a business at that stage. So work the opportunity hard. But then disaster happened. Because I'd obviously helped someone go gold, and they decided that they were moving, they left and moved, and they quit. So there was me, back to gold again. How does that feel? Anyone lost a person? Yeah, and you have a choice at that stage, don't you? Here's the choices you have. When adversity stares at you, because some people have gone, Christ, and this is what happens. They go, oh. they have like a hippo moment. They go, oh, God. And they go and sulk a little bit. So this is what it is. Do you have a hippo moment? So when it doesn't go your way, do you start sitting there, sitting in the mud going, oh, God, if, you know, it could have been, what could have done? Maybe you stamp your feet a little bit. You're like, oh, God. Or maybe you throw your toys out of the pram. Maybe... You cry forever. Oh, my God. You might just kick your partner. That might help it. Get them out to work as well, maybe. Sulk. Stay at home with a face like a smacked. Yep. It, you see, it, it's one of the most expensive things you could do in the business, this is. Sulking. When it doesn't go your way. And this is the direction your business will go if you do it. So it hasn't gone your way and you sulk, you're throwing money down the toilet. Because what happens is you sit at home, go, I'm not going out, can't be bothered, not working. So as that happens, your business starts to dwindle and die off. So you're just throwing money down the toilet. But this is what I did to show you how to combat that situation. This is what I did. I recovered quickly. Nothing was going to stop me. I found support, first key one. So I phoned someone who had been through the same situation at a higher level to ask them what to do. Look for my silver lining, because there's always a silver lining to the cloud, isn't there? 
Yeah, there is. There always is. And there always will be. And then I refocused, doubled my efforts, and Bob's your uncle, three periods later, so they quit, and three periods later, guess what happened? Someone else went gold. I was like, well, so that's okay then. But that was only three periods later, so that was great. See, this is your hope plus action. Here's the message. So you can dwell under the shadows of the past. You can. Or you can dance in the sunlight of today. Because every day is a new day, isn't it? Or you can sit there and worry about what's happened and work hard for a better tomorrow. Every day you can work hard for a better tomorrow. It's your choice. So my hope plus action, at the end of that year, we'd gone um, senior. Then one year later, we went bronze. Then we went silver exec a year later. At that stage, I was helping, and I placed someone here as well. So as you can see, all the yellow ones are all our gold distributors at that stage. And this is what happened. This is where our first big reward came at this stage. And it was the first Mini Cooper. So clean, easy, because of the growth, and we'd held it for so many periods, they gave us a Mini Cooper. We qualified for a Mini Cooper, which was just amazing. So then I lost one of the golds again. Pete decided he was emigrating. He's a lovely guy, still talk to him to this day, but he emigrated to Australia. So again, what do you do when the adversity stares you in the face? Refocus, double your efforts, off you go. Discipline is not the enemy of enthusiasm. Having a discipline on a daily basis to do what you need to do to grow the business, discipline is a key ingredient to success. And it also fuels enthusiasm. You see, when you have a disciplined business and a disciplined work plan, you get results. And as your results are positive, your enthusiasm goes up. But as your enthusiasm goes up, also does your teams. Because they can see the positive results as well. Wouldn't you agree? You do, all you have to do is have the discipline to employ yourself on a daily basis. That's all you really have to do. So then we went gold exec the next year after. So as you can see, I'm not fast. What I did was I went senior one year, next year bronze, next year silver, won the car. Then we went gold exec. But you see my friend here, he's now bronze. That's the one that I joined in the swimming pool reading the book. But then I lost another one. One of my golds died. I'm not, he did. He passed away. He, um, you know, unfortunately. So he passed away as well. But could I help that? No, there's nothing you can do, is there? Let me tell you, you know when people go, you shouldn't quit? Yeah, you hear that saying? Everyone goes, oh, you shouldn't quit. Let me tell you, over those years, the six years, how much income has been lost by those people? Want to have a guess? Have a look. That's how much? £300,000. Could anyone of you in here give up £300,000? Are they mad to leave? Of course. So then we, we carried on building. Gold exec here. At this time, I had another senior business as well. And then the second big reward. In that year, in the 14 months, we won another Mini, which was just great, and a Vauxhall Corsa. Now, there's a little sign here uh, for me, because every time they put up little incentives like this, what do you think I think? Oh, I can have one of those. Because once you've won one, I thought, oh, I can have another one. Oh, and then I can just have another one, and another one maybe, you know? And so, it, you know, understand the background I come from. I'm a fisherman, aren't I? Anyone can have this. And the third big reward, I at that stage, I was a gold executive distributor earning over £50,000 a year. Life-changing money for me. Life-changing. Never earned that before and a spanking new house I'd bought. Because what I did with the three cars is I sold them all. And I bought my first ever house. Now, to you guys, that may not sound a lot, but I'm telling you, I, live in rented, I lived in rented accommodation from when I was 18 till I was 36. And only Clean Easy provided me enough money to buy my own house. It was only this company that did it. 
all the other times I've only been able to afford to rent, you see. And driving some dream cars at this time. But let's just show you. Here's, here's, that's my house. So that's our brand new house that we bought. It's a couple of years old. Oh, that's the living room. She made me put that in there because she likes the fireplace with dream on it. And I was like, oh, okay. There's her kitchen, our kitchen. That's my car. That's um, the one I drive. Lovely BMW 330 diesel. Beautiful to drive. And that's Claire's. Drives a, a new BMW. Just bought it a couple of weeks ago. Thank you, Clean Easy. <laughs> um, again, so do you know? But as a fisherman, I never had that. C shall I tell you what car I drove when I first joined? Had a six year, I had a B-Reg Maestro. I did. That's what I joined with. And do you know, I used to drive around in that little Maestro, and I used to think to myself, maybe one day I can have a posh car like him or a posh car like them. And it was smelly because it smelled fish all the time. It was just horrible. Then we worked hard. Action. There was the opportunity. I just took action. Joined one person a week. That was my discipline. I have joined one person a week for the last six years. That's how it's grown for me. I just had enough discipline to go and do that. And this is how it was when we went SED. So here, that what, this one's gold. All the five frontline golds. One building to gold. Another one building to gold. Another one building to gold. Two golds there. And another one here. So a great solid business. Wouldn't you agree? And it just continues like that now. And now we can just build again. Here's the holidays we've won. I mean, the holidays we used to go on was like the kids' ones with the three-star, you know, Spanish holidays, you know, where you drink the beer, don't you, and sit by the pool. That's all I've ever been able to afford. That's the max. And I used to have to save really hard. In fact, here goes the saving story for you. <laughs> Claire is great at saving money. She's just the most amazing person with money. You know, I, I, I come home from work one day and I had to look after the kids. And anyway, Jack was on the bed and he spilled my drink all over the bed. So I got, took the bed and I turned the mattress. And as I turned the mattress, an envelope fell out. And I was like, oh, Christ, what's in here then? So I picked it up. Anyway, there was 780 quid in cash. She'd been storing it from me for months. Anyway, we did spend the money on a holiday. I didn't spend it. But those are the types of things we couldn't afford to go. We had to save really hard to go. But Athens, Vienna, these are the trips Clean Easy have sent me on for free. Five star. Cruise, that was amazing, the cruise. The best thing about the cruise was, obviously I love boats anyway, and on the night of the gala dinner, it was incredible because everyone was in there and it was really buzzing and there was a big storm and everyone left. So anyone with sea legs was okay. So Pete White got the whole table full of wine like this. So me and Pete White just drank all this wine all night. It was amazing. But it was beautiful. Cape Town, Hong Kong, Miami, and obviously Dubai and the Maldives, which is just incredible. You can't live a life like that outside of this business, I'm telling you. I've been and worked in the job world. It doesn't, it doesn't pay the sort of money Clean Easy does. These are our team. This is in Miami. There's my groove. I call them the groovy gang. They are like super groovers, really. And that's the boat. There's another boat we went on in Miami. God, he nearly crashed it into the side a couple of times. He really did. Because uh, it was so windy when he parked here. There's the girls out on tour. You know, all dressed up, ready to go. And there's the boys. Don't we look smart? Looks really good, doesn't it? But these are times... Can you imagine me as a fisherman wearing a dicky bow and like a little, yeah, uh, just never, never happened. I used to wear an all skin and that was it. And that's the gir girls on the beach, obviously. That's all in Miami, just fantastic. You have such an amazing time with your people. They're memories you'll never forget. You'll make friendships you'll never break. And there's them on the dance floor, drunk as normal. <laughs> How lucky am I? Well, this is the other bet. Senior executive distributor now, earning over £50,000 a year. Who would like to earn 50? Hands up if you'd just like £50,000 a year. Put out catalogues, join one person a week. The skills will come. They will come, honestly. Qualify for Miami and the Maldives, obviously, already. And Clean Easy have just given me £25,000 in cash. We had, we had to go SED and hold it for 10 periods. Do you think it was worth holding the position for 10 periods? <laughs> yeah. You could have come on stage. We could have done sharing if you'd helped, but you never did. <laughs> I'm quite happy to help myself, though. <laughs> so there's my little lucky leprechaun.
So our bonuses in the last five years alone, just in bonuses, this is not in income. This is just cash bonuses I've won from the company. The three cars gave me £31,000. Clean Easy then gave me £25,000 cash bonus. In the last five years, I've earned just in bonuses alone £56,000. That's an average of £10,000 a year in bonuses without my salary. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> but here's one thing I really know for sure, and I really promise you, this is it, this is it. It's got nothing to do with luck. <laughs> you know, I'm not a lucky leprechaun. I'd like to think I am, but I've played the lottery loads of times and just lost every time. If I was that lucky, I would have won, wouldn't I? So it's got nothing to do with luck. You see, it's the opportunity plus the action you, you take will make the creation. It's the business you create from that. Ordinary people are able to achieve. It is just about myself, I'm a fisherman. John's a fisherman. Ordinary people achieving extraordinary things. That's what our business is all about. That's what our opportunity can give us and give other people that you join to the business. It's incredible. And here's my motto. Become a dreamer. And that's what I was like in the early days. I just thought about everything I could have. I want the car, I want this, I want that. But this is the key. I was a dreamer, and I did dream a lot. You've just got to work like a winner. And Claire and I will see you in Dubai. Thanks ever so much.